Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. recording this on video so i could in theory oh. post your little dance that we do what dance the little dance that we do while the intro's <laughs> no, playing oh no there's no dance we're, <laughs> we're very serious people we sit in silence we stare straight ahead while the video is playing yes that's how i do that's it that's what we do here yeah well hello aki well hello stevie how are you doing i'm well thank you i'm well i'm just so excited with all of this this trek and these these Trek related announcements, Mr. Lavar Burton. What what is Lavar Burton? Oh, oh, that he's going to be. Yeah. Uh, yes. Jeopardy I mean, host. these are very exciting things. The people willed it, and it happened. The people willed it, and also uh, maybe someone who was not the best candidate was selected. Also and, that. And uh, so it's happening um, the proper way now. Yeah. Is. 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 Yes. Um, I was just telling Aki that if you're trying to do a sort of received pronunciation British accent like the Queen, if you say ears, ears, as in the things that you listen to music with, uh, it sounds like yes, but posh. So ears, ears, yes, indeed. ears, ears. Also, if you say it with an American accent, it just sounds like ears. <laughs> <laughs> ears. That sounds lovely. Um, ears. <laughs> Okay, welcome to Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. That was our cold open. Today's yeah. star date is uh, 32282.3.8. And we're discussing Lower Decks Season 2, Episode 2. Keishan, his eyes open, which mm-hmm. is like a dead giveaway right in the title. Yeah. We're going to have some fun with Tamarians. Uh, shall we run it down? Let's run it down. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? What just happened? Can you run it down for me? I'd only be happy to. Uh, okay, so we begin, you know, things are as they are. Boimler we're still not on the ship. So the crew, the gang that hangs, the Lower Decks gang, uh, I think, I forget which shift they were. They're like beta shift. Beta. There was a time they, had, they were fighting they Delta. They were like Delta, yeah. Yeah, so they're beta shift gang is mariner rutherford and tendy and then jet shows up jet who was like the cool dude who was like the ex-boyfriend of boimler's girlfriend season one right or something like that yeah the the hot one who then yeah figured out he had an alien in him that one yeah yeah, yeah. so yes. he's been transferred to the cerritos and he introduces himself to Mariner. Mariner's like, great, join in. I'm sort of the leader on here. And he's like, oh, really? Because he sort of is a leadery type. And uh, they go into the uh, communal sonic showers, which is hilarious. And they start wanting up each other. And they they basically drive everyone out of the showers as they send these sonic waves. Super hot, I guess. Hot, mm-hmm. hot waves. I was really wondering about what that sensation would be like. Hot, just hot, hot music. It's like techno i don't know um <laughs> it's like a lot of bass drops anyway so we get into the real meat of the story it's captain freeman has they're doing a log date it's 58001.2 uh talking about you know people in the star trek world who are like wealthy adventuring people who like to gather fancy artifacts and hold on to them and how they're called collectors and a prominent collector by the name of kerner howes has died and the collector's guild a guild i guess of these wealthy well-to-do people has asked the federation to help catalog uh uh kerner house's sort of like well his collection uh so freeman is talking to chairman siggy who's the chairman of the guild and uh he's like just go in there and check stuff out but i'm gonna be watching too because i don't want you to take anything i just want to make sure we don't have anything that like will blow me up uh, Freeman is kind of like upset and nervous because she's waiting on the results of her command evaluation test. Ooh. 
And so they throw the task of leading the away team to the new head of security, Lieutenant Kayshawn, a Temerian, mm -hmm. who immediately shows up and starts speaking in metaphor. Metaphor. Uh, it says he has a little trouble with the Universal Translator and is rusty on his Federation standards. So that brings some that some joyful things happen uh, while that's going on. And the gang of Beta Shift are going to be going with Lieutenant Kayshawn to the Collector ship to catalog all the stuff. And they're like, oh, man, wish Boimler was here. He'd really love this. And they're like, he's probably having a great time. Meanwhile, Boimler's on a on the Titan in a huge firefight with pack leads. And Riker tells him uh, to do this particular thing. And they take out the pack lead ship. And everyone cheers. And Boimler's, like, pretty freaked out and destroyed. It seems like he's, like, pretty uh, enervated, I guess. Maybe a little anxious about being on the ship where they're constantly fighting. It seems like they're always flying into things and flying out of things and fighting and shooting. Uh, meanwhile, back on the Cerritos, uh, the group shows up. They meet uh, Lieutenant Kayshawn. Uh, Jet sucks up a little bit, uh, but they go down to the collector ship, and Siki basically gives them the whole rundown, and they're looking through stuff, and there's some weird Easter eggs here. Uh, there's a ton of Easter eggs. This entire episode is a ton of Easter eggs. Yeah. Episode of Easter eggs. Which we will get to later on. Thank you, Augie. Later on in the Easter egg segment. So I'll just go say there's some stuff that happens. Siggy's kind of uh, wary of Tendi, who's an Orion, who are, you know, pi pirates, so to speak, in the Trek lore. And so she's upset about that, and he's keeping an eye on her. He's also interested in Rutherford as possibly being added to his collection. Uh, and so that's what's happening there. Meanwhile, Riker is having his command staff meeting, and they're saying that the Packlands are after Veruvian ore, and there's something weird about their the way they're attacking, that maybe there's another player involved. And Boyle was having trouble keeping up. He's got like 40 logs in his hand at the table while everyone else is sort of talking. They're all like really hardened, badass Starfleet people. Uh, one of them has a ridiculous... Uh, I was like, is that Jason Statham or someone just doing a Jason Statham type voice? I didn't look into it, but I can if you like. I didn't either. Uh, there were a lot of voices I did recognize, but that guy was like, this is so weird that they chose... This gruff British <laughs> commando voice. Uh, and they think there may be another player involved. So they're going to have the away team, which is basically the command staff, which makes no sense. But whatever, it's cool. In, well, that's Star Trek. Embed themselves in a Veruvian mining colony, colony on Carzil 4. And the hope is that the Packles will show up there. They'll, they'll put a, like a locator on the ship. Uh, and then they'll be able to follow the Packles back to their their Veruvian thing and figure out what's going on there. Meanwhile, on the collector ship, something happens. Someone must have moved something or touched something or stole something that they shouldn't have. Dun, dun, dun. And automated uh, defenses are set into play. And uh, like a hologram of the collector shows up and he's like, because you tried to steal from my collection, I will make you part of the collection. And Lieutenant Kayshawn gets blasted with an energy weapon and he's turned into a puppet. Uh, then a flying orb comes out and it starts shooting at them. I wrote down what happens. Snakes are released from one thing that start jumping at them. Swords are thrown out of a thing. The comms are blocked, so they're unable to contact the ship. And Jet and Mariner are fighting over who's in charge and who should save the Kayshawn doll and how to get out of there. They do manage to get out of this one gallery into a hallway. And they're looking at the plans of the ship. And Mariner has this plan. That's like, we got to fight our way to the engineering and turn off the thing. And Jet cuts her off and says, no, let's do this much safer plan to go this way. And Mariner's like, no, we're going to do my cool thing. And everyone's like, actually, I think we'll go with Jet's plan. Seems less risky. Meanwhile, the undercover op that the Titan crew is headed to is underway. They're on a ship headed toward uh, Carzil. Oh, no. Oh, Carzil 4. <laughs> I said it right. I didn't have to look up. And uh, But it's interesting. The... You know, Boimler obviously loves Enterprise D. They're sort of making fun of the Enterprise. They're talking about how their captain, they're like, can't believe Riker hung out on the Enterprise D and like listened to string quartets and got dressed in period costume and did plays and stuff. They're like, sucks. We're so cool. We like beating up the bad guys. And Ransom, uh, Boimler's kind of like, oh, that sucks. Uh, on the Cerritos, uh, Freeman is super distracted and Ransom starts to wonder what it is. And it's because Freeman has been reading her command uh, evaluation and has been told that she micromanages and uh, she's very upset about this. So she says she's not going to check in on Lieutenant 
Uh, Kayshawn, she's just going to let him do what he's doing because she trusts him. Meanwhile, the away team is down there and fighting off all sorts of things. They almost get sucked into an organic matter compactor. Uh, inorganic matter into an inorganic matter compactor. Oh, the tongue twisters are back. What? 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 <laughs> into an inorganic matter compactor. Into an inorganic matter compactor. Okay. Uh, killing Romulan warrior nuts. And they... That'll never <laughs> leave my brain. And and <laughs> the Siggy basically runs away because he's got nothing uh, inorganic on him. Uh, we assume, but they're sucking at Rutherford's implants. Everyone's trying to, you know, pull Rutherford out and he's getting his implants, getting almost sucked out of his head. But then the giant machine that was attacking them at the beginning of that scene gets sucked into the inorganic matter compactor and it shuts it down. They save uh, Rutherford and then they discover Siggy in the next room, which is full of like weird bones and skeletons. One huge one on the ceiling with a Starfleet uniform on it. And, uh, they discover that Siggy is the one who stole something from the collection. What he stole? <sighs> God. They call it a sex helmet, but earlier on it was referred to as Kalesh's um, fornication <laughs> helmet. <laughs> Kalesh, uh, for- right, Kalesh's yeah. fornication helmet. And that's why there was an alert, and that's why the alarms got all tripped up, and that's why they're fighting for their lives meanwhile he tries to back away he trips yet another alarm and is crushed by the giant skeleton and then further crushed by the skull of the giant skeleton mariner and jet start fighting about who was wrong and who was right and whether they should have gone this way there's a bunch of flying roombas flying around basically little vacuums mariner gets upset and hits one and then they all uh, turn red and decide to start attacking the crew by slowly sucking them to death and so jet and mariner now are fighting over how to deal with that meanwhile the titan team gets down to the planet the base has already been taken over by the Packlids. The team was given orders to avoid the Packlids, but they see a one Packlid in the corner and they decide to stun it so it doesn't send up an alarm before they're able to put the tracker on the thing. It turns out to be a pile of snacks. Their cover is blown and they're being chased by Packlids through the mining facility. Back on the collector ship, Jet has used the giant bones and everything to create a barrier and he and Mariner are still arguing about who does what best. Mariner thinks Jet wants to be a mama co- commander. Jet thinks Mariner wants to be a renegade hero. They're upset about their different approach but then they bond over making fun of their superior officers and how they just want to do what's right and maybe they have different approaches and they both apologize and take fault for what's happened and they decide maybe neither of them should be in charge and so they, they say hey Rutherford Tendy what should we do and Rutherford and Tendy go oh well we're not in charge but then they come up with a sweet plan to use the bones to make an acid compound that will allow them to cut through the panels of the ship to get to like the Jeffrey Stoops to get out. I feel like that whole sort of sequence could have been used for some sort of like internal team management examples of what not to do and how to resolve conflict. That's how I would use it. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, let's watch this five minute clip from Lower Decks and discuss how management is like this and not like this. <laughs> Who's the Tendy on your team? Okay, so yeah, I've done events like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the mining colony, uh, they're still running from the packlets. They managed to get behind some like blast doors and at the center of the mining thing where the the drill is. And but there's a distortion field because of the Veruvian Veruvian stuff. And so they're unable to transport out. And Riker's like, stay there. We're going to try to figure something out. The three other people on the away team prepare. They're like, well, this is how we're going to go out. And they get their faces out. They're like, this is, it's been great. And they're all like giving each other like the last handshake before they make a, you know, an, a futile stand, a, an Alamo. Uh, and then Boyan was like, well, you know what? That's not really why I got into Starfleet. He's like, you know, I got into it because I like diplomacy and sciencey stuff and, and figuring out things. And I love string quartets. And then the rest of the team sort of remembers that they didn't also get, into, they got into Starfleet for weird things. One of them got into to study Moss. The other one just loves transporter beams. Uh, but Boimler re- mentions uh, how the Riker, when he was on the Enterprise D, did have an accidental uh, a transporter mishap that led to his transporter clone mm-hmm. twin, Thomas, being created. And that the the radiation is a lot like the radiation down here. And then he's like, I have an idea. And he runs over to a thing. Tendi and Rutherford's plan works out well on the collector ship. Uh, Tendi gets super badass and says, stay late, stay alert, stay alive. And they're able to get out into a ship and get out of the thing. On the mining colony, the Packlids get through the door. Boimler initiates the mining drill, reverses the polarity, you know, the usual Star Trek fake jargon. Hmm. 
the Titan is able to get a signal lock because the reverse polarity disperses the field that wasn't letting them get out. They're able to transport everyone but Boimler. And then the there's a huge explosion and Boimler ends up trapped underneath rubble and he's being attacked by pack leads while he's trapped under the rubble and he's screaming for his life. But they do manage to get him out after the usual, like, it doesn't work. And then Riker says, like, double the frequency or something. And they manage to get Boimler out. And then as they're sort of, like, celebrating that, there's a Starfleet shuttle coming from the surface. And they're like, how's that possible? And they transport the person on the fl- the shuttle directly from the from the shuttle onto the ship. And it's Boimler's transporter clone because, obviously, he reverse the polarity there is an explosion he now has a transporter clone so now there are two of them <laughs> two boimlers twice the boim and uh oh do we have our boy oh that was the one fan. thing i did not find today i m- might have it I'm not just super important i mean you know just for me. momentito boimler? that was really worth it wasn't it that was worth it that was worth the wait <laughs> There it is. Um, okay, so one of them will have to return to the Cerritos as an ensign, and the other one can stay on in command staff. One of the Boimlers tricks the other. I assume it's the new Boimler that tricks the old Boimler, because that's the only thing that makes sense, into saying, I'll go, thinking that the other one will also volunteer, but he doesn't. He's like, I'm going to stay here. And so he gets walked out by a Wrecker, who's sort of like, you know what? You should enjoy being on a ship that isn't always fighting people and gets to do weird sciencey stuff while it lasts. And the other Boimler immediately starts sucking up to Riker. But the Boimler, who is being sent back as an ensign, he gets like, uh, you know, the away team comes and goes, you know, you did great out there, Boimler. And thanks for reminding us what Starfleet's all about. I like how even though these shows are so silly and over the top and ridiculous, they still like the the pathos of Starfleet is still so mm. important. Well, it's, it's Mike like, Bumon for you. Even, yeah, even like uh, Mariner and Jet fighting, they come they are like so understanding when they come to a realization that they just have a difference of approach mm-hmm. to trying to be a good officer. Anyway, get off my soapbox. We cut to the end of things. We're in sick bay. Kayshawn is there as a puppet. Uh, the doc is like, don't worry about it. This is not my first person turned into a puppet. He'll be fine in an hour. Jet and the gang go down to the 10 forwards type area they're eating street corn and they're talking about how you know what we're all good this is going to be a good time we're going to be great new friends this is a new group but then mariner sees boimler and immediately pushes jet out of the way and then they give boimler jet's seat and jet's like well you guys probably have to talk but then they completely disregard him altogether uh boimler explains that there was a transporter clone uh mishap and that's why he came back rutherford wins a transporter clone bet with tendy apparently he knew it was going to happen um Jet walks away uh, upset. I don't think that'll be the last. I feel like Jet is going to become sort of a nemesis now of Boimler. Hmm, that would make sense. Don't you think? He feel, felt like they made a big deal out of how he, angry he was when he walked away. He was a bit pissed. Or put out. Put out. He was put, put out. out. Ears. Yeah, excuse me. Ears. He was put out. Ears. He Ears. was rather put out. He was rather put out. Um sound like such a villain <laughs> uh Kayshawn returns to the mess uh they send Boimler to get shots and they say he's gonna have to get all the shots from now on because he abandoned them and the very last scene is Kayshawn trying to hit on an ensign which is probably going to be my quote of the episode and that is the end of episode two of season two of Star Trek Lower Decks Kayshawn his eyes opened <sighs> a few things of note because I listen to a lot of LA comedian uh, like improv people podcasts. I immediately mm-hmm. noticed a uh, Paul F. Tompkins character was back briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, the doctor, he, he's at the beginning and plays with the puppet at the end. Also, uh, the voice of uh, Ray Sean is, I believe, Carl Tart. I haven't looked any of this up. He's a he's a uh, a comedian, and the voice of the this is just a weird thing. I believe another guess here, the transporter. Uh, like tech who's helping Riker mm-hmm. get I think that was Jess McKenna another great uh, improviser you are am I right three for three yes yeah actually and Jess McKenna in fact played Ensign Barnes yes she continues to play the Cerritos computer oh I didn't know she was a computer that's great mm-hmm. Jess McKenna's wonderful 
Jess McKenna and Carl Tarrant are fantastic, so it's just cool that they're on that show because I put them. They're they're very funny people, and they obviously they get it because they did a great job. Uh, anyway, those are uh, nerdy outlier things that I noticed. So it was a great show. Good for you. It was a good one. Shall we? Easter eggs. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aki Burmese, and you've come uh, to the part of the show where we go to Easter eggs. We're going to go to our friend Stevie Mads on the corner. Stevie, you're on the corner of episode two. What have you got to say? Well, hello there, Aki. As always, it's great to be here. Great to be here on the uh, so many Easter eggs forums today. <laughs> it's great to be here, Ed. Great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I always do that. It feels like they always do that when they're correspondents. Hey, it's great it. to be here. Yeah. It's great to be here. Um, <laughs> Well, as I say, this was an episode of Easter Eggs. It was the Easter Egg of Easter Eggs of episodes of Easter Eggs, mm -hmm. if you will. Yes, the ears. The ears, indeed. Um, so the collector, whose name I have somewhat forgotten, but so when you go into that big collector's room, the guy who's you know has his, his painting, whatever, he looks very much like and is meant to look like um, the collector from the episode with Data called The Most Toys. Do you remember it was a, yes. really, it was a good actor who was in right. Frasier. I've forgotten his name. Um, um, yes. But he was wearing, weirdly, the same uniform. Not that it was a uniform, because he's a collector. Yeah. I, I yeah. thought that was a bit weird, like but he had the same... Or yeah, 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 his mm -hmm. clothes. And he was clearly the same species as well. So I thought that was like a nice little throwback. So this is clearly what That's we're referencing. Great. If you spot nothing else... And they did mention else, that they, they all tried to collect data. Like, mm. collectors always wanted to collect data. You know? Yeah. So Mr. Boimler obviously became the transporter clone, which is a nice little throwback mm -hmm. to TNG. I forget which episode that was, so apologies, let me look that one up. Mm. Um, did you notice the robot killers, the ones that were like, after the sort of Roombas were sent out, they yes. were like the robot killers. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember like in TNG season one, the arsenal of freedom, and there were, it was like when they go down to the planet, God. I think it was Minos, and they had these weird yes. like, Yes, and they yes. like zapped and things. Um, that for me was like, I'm not sure. They didn't look exactly the same because they had sort of like a head and then kind of a body yeah, right, to right, it. Right. But like the actual head of it was just sort of this spherical thing with this weird laser laser thingy bulb. Mm -hmm. um, other things, yeah, this is, that was a deep one. But like I really remember that one, I think, from my childhood. So I was like, oh, that looks familiar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The fornication helmet of Kalish. There were just lots of these little things like spread around in the collector yes. room. And like, so when you, you know, you could dig into some of the, the forums or whatever. And someone was like, oh, I thought the shark was the Damien Hurst shark. Right. Yeah. I thought it was a bit, that was, a little, I don't know about that. I felt that was a bit of a, right. a stretch. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't put it past them to be like, let's just throw every goofy thing into this. In the That's very possible. You know? Did you notice that the thing that was about to fall on Lieutenant Kayshawn? Um, from the glass case was the necklace of Khan. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, awesome. Deep cut. I missed that. Yeah, that's cool. And oh, the Chateau Picard wine box. Did you mm -hmm. see that? Yes, I saw mm -hmm. that. Yes. And then the giant skeleton. So this is you'll love this because I think this is another like deep track cut. And it was, I it, we I think it was the giant Spock. So with it, there was a. An episode in the animated series where um, they cloned a giant Spock. Yes, I was trying. To, I was. That's totally what it was. Yeah. Wow. Because I was trying to figure out from what TOS episode it was, but it wasn't. It was actually from the animated yes, yeah. series. Oh man, I was looking at it and I was like, "That's a reference to something for sure," but I couldn't think of what. Yeah. Who would become a giant? <laughs> it's from a. The, it's yeah, from it's weird, the first huh? TAS, as they say. The animated T A S, yes. that's correct. But yeah, that was those were like they, there were so many things in there. I think someone even said that they spotted Marty McFly's <laughs> sneakers, and there were a pair of sneakers. Yeah. I didn't think they looked like Marty I'd have McFly's to go look ones. At those again. I don't yeah, know. there were there was just a lot in there, and it was it was quite fun because I was like pausing and seeing what I could find. But uh, right, I, I got yeah. on the second watch. That's what I did because and it fits mm, it all yeah. in within about two minutes. There was a trombone. Yes, it was trombone. Mm. And then there is a theory floating that that trombone was from the episode where Riker gets cloned and he gives his trombone to Thomas Riker. Well, yeah. to Thomas. It's a, it's yeah. a shot in the dark, but it's it's possible. And you know how nerdy these, yeah. these writers are. So I thought that that could be it. But did you totally. did you spot any more? No, I mean, I, I was proud of myself for 
the Chateau Picard. Yes. <laughs> I knew that if I had, I was taking notes on the show. So I knew, I knew if I just paused and screen cap and try to find things. But I feel like just on like third and fourth watches later down the line, it'll be fun mm. to see stuff that I miss that's in the background there. That with the pod that they were moving towards the end looked like a Genesis pod. I mean, it's all over the place. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right totally. before the, the thing got set off from, uh, from Search for Spock, which of course makes sense that then they would have the. I can't believe I missed the con thing. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's preposterous. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So uh, good to hear from you and good to hear from you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rocky. That's uh, back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you very much. And that has been Easter Egg, Easter Egg. Uh, good night and good luck. That's actually a better button on the, <laughs> the end of that segment. <laughs> well, there's, the, there's uh, the ending. It's, it's a bit more of a trumpet. If you want to hear that one. I find that a little bit too that much. That feels more like you you stuck the landing on something. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. Well, before we get into to next time, I do want to mention two things mm -hmm. because we talked last episode about how maybe there's like a larger overarching plot here. And I think they're trying to set up a few things. Like, first of all, there's some dangling threads. Like, I know Jet, maybe, maybe not, but it seems like he's on the ship for permanence. So he's probably going to have a little beef with Boimler and them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Captain Freeman is, you know, it was mentioned in episode one that maybe she could move up in her, her ranking, maybe get a different ship. Mm -hmm. And now she's dealing with this uh, command evaluation thing. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, Riker mentions that they think there's another player in the works with the whole pack led thing in the Veruvian ore, but they never get to who that player is because the team botched the mission and they had to leave. But there's, mm -hmm. there's probably some, some, Something like the chain out there. Did you say That's the part chain? Of, oh, do you still have that? You don't still have that. Sure do. Huh. Huh. I think I got pulled up for copyright. M real chain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in deep trouble. Oh, uh, it could be anything. It's just a person stepping around and uh, noodling on a guitar. Hmm. The emerald chain. You'll never break the emerald chain. No. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I think it's interesting that there's some, there might be some larger plot points there mm -hmm. coming for the season arc. And uh, I thought that was cool. And maybe we won't see the last of Mr. Boimler. That's true. And I think that was a nice, yeah. a nice point because it was like both and because Boimler genuinely did want to be on both ships and now he kind of gets to. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I did wonder, and I wonder if you had this thought, was uh, with replacing Shax, because yeah. um, Kayshawn came back so i wondered whether or not we were going to lose kayshawn and then we were going to sort of have a rotating uh -huh. chief Master of security of kind of deal yeah mm -hmm. it seems like maybe they're i don't know so i looked briefly to see if it was someone i knew and they weren't mentioned the only person they mentioned as like a guest star was was Riker, mm -hmm. uh, which makes sense because i guess he would be a guest star so everyone else would just be an actor i don't know i was thinking if it was carl tart he's the kind of person that could stick around and do that part for the season. But maybe we lose the head security officer every season. It's like a, you know, a throwback to a TNG. Cash ER? Yeah. Maybe. That's you just fair. always lose your, <laughs> your head security officer in a blaze of glory in the, although hers wasn't a blaze oh, of glory. It was so sad and stupid. Yeah. Anyway, next time. <laughs> next time. Next time on set phasers. And it should be mentioned that she did come back and get to play other characters. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Set Phasers. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed the program, you can catch a ton of old episodes. We've covered all of uh, see the first three seasons of Star Trek Discovery, uh, the first season of Star Trek Picard, and the first season of Lower Decks. And we will keep covering mm -hmm. stuff as long as uh, I can get to a microphone wherever I am in the world. And, uh, and yep. Stevie has to do all the rest of the stuff, basically. Uh, and yeah, I get the hard, he, I get the hard it's job. True. And, uh, and then uh, you can catch new episodes every Monday wherever you get your podcast from. So please do that. 
Yeah, and our little podcast, apparently, Aki, we're actually doing quite well in after shows in Japan. Get out of town. We're, we're big in Japan. <laughs> For real, Finally. Yeah, I think we were like top 40 or what? something of after shows. Top and in, yeah, I think mean, in Canada, we're certainly top 100. I think we dropped 20 places. Wow. I don't know where this stuff comes well, from. Well, you know, so there are no shows on. We're, we're going to climb back up that ladder. That's Japan true. and Canada, we're taking yeah. it over. All right. Ireland, we did quite well in Ireland. Great. Ireland. But, these Ireland? things, yeah. Ireland, uh, of course, you can follow us. Our Ireland, ah, we're doing we're doing well in, in the old Irish space. Uh, Mr. Mr. O'Bly, Mr. O'Bly, O'Brien. I bet we'll do. I bet we'll do. I'm Irish, deaf. I can't hear Irish accents. <laughs> And if you want to follow us on uh, all of our socials, we are at Set Phasers and at Set Phasers Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Hashtag Mimi Strong. Mimi Game Strong. And if you want to support us on our continuing mission to discover what else Star Trek has in store for us, we'd only be delighted. You can patronize us. We can take it by going to patreon.com slash Set Phasers and helping us keep the lights on. Mostly just yes. buy coffee. And we offer... Yeah. That's pretty yeah. much true. But we offer... We offer uh, what are, we have our Netflix watch That's parties right. we have our ask us anything we and we have little set phasers pins if you want to pin pins, you can, pins. Set you can set even you, if you set you free with a pin if you're feeling crazy you can buy yeah. a mug no don't, don't I, I'm not true. saying you got I made to. my wife wear my our you pin you made your wife wear our pin why would you do that well I gave her the pin and then you're like where's the pin I think she felt obligated oh, I see. yeah okay. it's much. just like uh, <laughs> yeah, well it was a gift great <laughs> yes she took it. We went to a restaurant. And she took it off, and I was like, "Where's the pin?" And she was like, "Oh, yeah. I just, just like, wanted to look smart." In public now, restaurant. so <laughs> I would have to yeah. wear this. <laughs> but it'll look cool on whatever you're wearing. There you go. Yeah. If you're a fan of the That's Set right. show, show your fan uh, dumb. dumb fandom. Show indeed. your fan yes. dumb. But yes. Okay. Well, it was. Is, are we done with our? You our do. You do a things? thing, and then I do a thing. Yeah, I think it's all of our. I do a thing. Okay. That's it. Super duper. Well, until next time, I am Stevie Mans, and I am Aki Burmese, and this has been Shaka when the walls fell. <laughs> we forgot to do. We forgot to do quotable moments. Program. Oh crap! <laughs> next time. On set Next phasers. time we'll do oh God. quotable moments. Quotable moments. We'll do quotable. Oh, we could do moments. it quickly now. Okay. Quotable thing. moments. What's your quotable moments? What was your quotable moment? It's just going to be the the pickup line he tried to use at the end. <laughs> oh, mine was. Let's see how this pack lids do with their aft hanging out. Oh, I did write that. That was great. That was, that was so Riker great. Yeah. Let's see how these pack lids do with their aft hanging out. I liked. Are you tired because you've been Arnok at the race of Natara through my mind all night? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, that was good. All right. Should we close it out now? Let's close it out for God's oh sake. Oh, boy. Computer. Close it down. Mm-hmm.